name is Maddie Briggs and I suffer from mental illness. I started when I was 17 years old and I was told I had to have open heart surgery to fix the dilated aorta that stemmed from my genetic disorder Turner Syndrome. But that's not this story. Little did I know that this would be the catalyst for a disease that has festered in my mind for longer than I probably really wanted to admit. After I was told the news of my surgery, everything had changed. I'd always been a very anxious person, but this amped it up to an 11. I remember my first panic attack. I was standing in basketball practice and just out of the blue realized that my heart was beating fast. At first I just took a deep breath and ignored it, because we'd just done some conditioning, so it couldn't have been anything. But when it continued, I began to think something else was seriously wrong. When it happened again, I knew I needed to get some help. So we made an appointment with my doctor, and from there the diagnosis was confirmed. I had anxiety. It was put on medication. My anxiety was most likely stemmed from my long-term medical condition, ADD, or Attention Deficit Disorder. This, again, is stemmed from my Turner Syndrome. Mental illness can be defined as disorders that affect your mood, thinking, and behavior. Examples of mental illness include depression, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, eating disorders, and addictive behavior. So, since mental health is very broad, I decided I need to do some research. One in five U.S. adults experience mental illness every year. One in 25 U.S. adults experience serious mental illness every year. One in six U.S. youth aged 6 to 17 experience a mental health disorder each year. And sadly, suicide is the second leading cause of death among people ages 10 to 34. So as you can see, mental illness can affect anyone at any time, no matter who you are. And unfortunately, there's a lot of stigma behind it. So to help me understand why and what we could do to get rid of it, I reached out to the mental health campaign, I Don't Mind. Founded in 2017 by Chris Wood, along with his best friend, Edward Smith, I Don't Mind's mission is to defeat the stigma about mental illness by inspiring conversations about mental health. Mm -hmm. They believe the more we talk openly about mental health, the more we can reach people suffering in silence and encourage them to get the help they deserve. I Don't Mind has currently raised over $350,000 for mental health organizations across the U.S., they are an official program of the Mental Health America, the world's leading community-based nonprofit dedicated to promoting mental health in America. I sent them a series of questions regarding the topic of mental health, and here's what they had to say. When asked about why there is so much stigma behind mental illness, they said, there's a lot of harmful stereotypes and misinterpretations of people living with mental illness that leads to stigma. People then internalize that stigma, and when they are struggling with their mental health, they could feel embarrassment or shame and don't want to speak up and ask for help. I then asked what we could do to kind of get rid of that. And they simply said, by talking about how we feel, admitting when you need help and prioritizing your mental health are all important ways to move past stigma. Those first steps will inspire others to talk about it and then the stigma starts to lift. This led me to my next question, how can we start this tough conversation about our mental health? And it broke down into three parts. One is to prepare. Think about what you're going to say so you can get all your thoughts in order and not forget anything. If need be, write them down. The more clearly you can convey your thoughts, the better. Two, decide who you want to talk to and be picky if you have to. It's okay to be selective. Choose someone who you can trust and rely on. Three is talk. Let it all out. It's okay to let your emotions show. When you get it out in the open, this will finally allow you to start feeling better and get the help you deserve. They gave some great advice on what family and friends can do if a loved one is suffering from mental illness. The biggest thing they could do is just be there for them and listen. And always remember, it's not about you, it's about them. Educate yourself, take it seriously, and remember to take care of yourself as well so you can be there for them. Something cool they also brought to my attention is an online testing link that they have on their website at www.idontmind.com. Check it out for yourself and get tested if you suspect something is wrong. Of course, it's not 100% when you need to go see a medical professional, but it's a great way to get started in the right direction. I then asked about some self-care activities that they like to do to keep up their mental health. They had a whole journal slash article on their website full of activities, including but not limited to exercise, meditation, getting outside, creating something like art, design, videos, etc., and socializing. Find an activity that works for you and stick with it. This is a great way to prioritize your mental health and get things back in order when you feel overwhelmed. And finally, use a social media platform to bring awareness and spread the word. Your mind matters, so you should talk about it. 
And while social media can affect people in a negative way, we both have agreed that it can also be a great place for people to talk about mental health, find amazing resources, and generate positivity too. Along with my medication, I picked up meditation, reading, up my dedication to my fitness, and my faith, and I found other ways to calm the storm in my head, AKA my anxiety. I have also recently picked up journaling to help get my thoughts in order. Now here are some statistics about treatment. 43.3% of US adults with mental illness received treatment in 2018. 64.1% of US adults with serious mental illnesses have received treatment in 2018. And 50.6% of US youth ages 6 to 17 with a mental health disorder received treatment in 2016. The average delay of the onset of mental illness symptoms and treatment is 11 years. This shocks me quite a bit because if someone feels like if they need help, they should be able to get it right away. But of course, there are many reasons why people don't. If you or someone you know suffers from mental illness, please seek help and don't wait. Your mind is important, so take care of it. Dealing with mental illness isn't easy, and some days are harder than others. Just so look at them as gifts, telling you that you still have a lot left to give in this world. An old basketball coach once told me, control what you can control. When you focus on what you can't control with your mental health, rather than what you can't, everything else just gets a little bit easier. And at the end of the storm, a big beautiful rainbow appears.